Good morning, friends. Welcome to Growing with Creekside. Today, we finally have a truck of soil delivered. If you remember from the last video, if you forgot it, check it out above. And um, we were expecting two deliveries of our soil for the nursery. There was one was supposed to arrive yesterday, one today. The one that was yesterday. It did come, but it was very much delayed. Got here late, late in the afternoon. Uh, I was already inside cooking supper, so we missed videoing that one. So I'm gonna take you along for the ride for this one to see, so that you can see what it looks like when a nursery gets soil delivered. I believe this is all of our production soil. Uh, what arrived yesterday was retail soil. So like it had our proven winners potting soil. It had uh, just different soils that we're gonna sell for retail. Today is the production side. So what are we gonna use as a grower for our annuals, perennials, and shrubs? The truck just got here. Jerry is going to unload it. So we're gonna show you all of that. And I'm gonna give you an update on the production one greenhouse. The concrete got uh, poured the other day right after the production annex. So while they're gonna get things set up, I'm gonna go ahead and take you along and let's give an update on the concrete in both of those spaces, show you what it looks like now that it is all poured, it is dried, it has been cut, everything is done. We can now begin to use the space as we want. So let's go on up here to the greenhouses and take a look. All right, so here we are at production one. Isn't she a beaut, y'all? Oh, isn't she gorgeous? Now, stay tuned at the end because we are going to show you some of the footage of when this got poured. We did not do a whole separate video for this being poured because we had just done one for the annex and we're like, you know, concrete being poured, kind of the same deal. But we want to take you along for the ride. So just stay tuned and we'll have all that footage at the end for you. But here we go. Um, you can see that we've had... Uh, little puppy prints. I don't know, can you see those? Uh, we've got the red mud. That's what we deal with here in the south is our red mud. Man, it, uh, it stains everything. It's just a matter of time. Concrete does not stay like this for very long, especially in the winter in the south. But here we go. We have got production one is poured. We call this production one simply because it was the first greenhouse that was built up here at production. So we have production one, and then next door, of course, is production two. We poured the concrete in production two last year. So that was the first year growing on concrete. Man, we loved it. And then right beside of production one is the dry storage. This is where we kind of recycled the greenhouses that were down at retail. And it is not a growing greenhouse. It simply houses all of some, you know, our supplies and materials and it's nice and clean. Here we go, production one. Nice thick layer um, of concrete. You can see that they have already, they came back the next day after the concrete was nice and dried and they go ahead and cut in with a saw lines. So these lines are meant for expansion. That way the concrete does not crack in really weird, odd shapes. So. They've got all the lines cut both horizontally, horizontally and vertically. I've talked about this before, but people are still asking questions. Here in North Carolina, Zone 7B, we do not have to use rebar and metal and support structure in our concrete in applications like this for mainly three reasons. One, this is not a massive load bearing floor. We're not building up building on top of it. This is not like a sky rise. It is not going to hold a lot of weight. The heaviest thing that's going to be on this may be like the small bobcat, uh, the John Deere, the Polaris, right? So there is, it's not going to be load bearing. Plants are going to sit on here and we're going to walk on it. So that's that. Um, also, our, our weather, right? We're North Carolina, we're very mild. So this isn't gonna be a greenhouse. Um, it's an unheated greenhouse in this particular one. Uh, so we're not gonna have massive fluctuations of temperatures. We don't get super, super cold and then super, super hot, right? So you have that. The foundation that it is on is extremely hard pan red clay. This ground is not going to shift whatsoever. If we were coastal North Carolina and we were on the sand, we're probably gonna have to have rebar to hold the structure. That is not the case here. And then um, also it's just, it's just, yeah, so it's not load bearing. We're not gonna have a lot of weight on it. It is our climate and it is 
the the foundation that is already here so that is why we do not have to have rebar and that wire support in any of our concrete pours a lot of people have asked that so i just thought i would give you an update on that we did obviously have to retrofit this greenhouse with the concrete if we um, had planned it ahead of time kind of like with the other one then it would be a little different because in the aspect of you can see right here where the concrete does not come up flush with the outside boards right we have a this is a two by four so that's two inches and then maybe three inches here so let's say a, a five inch gap between the concrete and the boards that is actually going to be okay because what we have done is when they were installing the concrete the highest point is in the center so we have the ridge in the center and then the water is going to shed both to the right and to the left so as the water sheds it will come and it will empty into this little trough area that we have that is just has it is not concrete down there it just has some dust but it is gravel so that way the water will come out and seep down in there now between production one and production two there's a massive french drain here so underneath all these leaves there is a drain that runs the entire length of these two greenhouses so it is it will collect in that french drain and then be piped out um, away from the structures so hopefully that'll kind of answer some questions on like as far as drainage and the slope and the grade uh, and why we don't use support structures but look at this okay so here we go coming from production one into the annex and look at that look how nice and smooth this transition is going to be ah oh, just lovely and you can see um, <laughs> a couple of you have said that you want to bring your roller skates man wouldn't that be fun we got like a little roller derby going on out here but they too have cut the lines um, in the annex section too so we have good room for expansion hopefully no cracks will come up but coming back out of here so going from the production greenhouses into the annex on this production one this was our first obviously our first greenhouse and we have a massive door on the front and the back and it rolls down it is manual we're going to be taking that out and we're going to be installing basically like sliding barn doors that will come and slide closed so this has got to be where we worked a little bit you can see that um, josh and roman have already kind of framed it out some but this roller bar that you see right here it's going to be gone so just ignore that it will be just like the doors the exact same doors that we have here on production two uh, they have been ordered and they are coming um, when we put concrete in here we had to reframe a little bit so we need to come back in here and, and clean up the extra plastic you will see that the heater here is right now is not vented totally fine because we're not using it we're gonna have to extend that vent to go well above and out away from the structure of the annex so there's a little bit of work to be done which is no big deal we still have a good amount of time our plants first round of plants arrives i'm going to say mid-january so we're good on that jerry has gone ahead and ordered a heater for production one simply for those nights it gets get really cold we like having one greenhouse that we grow plants colder in so that helps slow the growth down so your petunias your caliber coas um uh, i'm trying to think of what other some other cool weather plants um impatience those kinds of things like your double like your double impatience we can grow those a little cool that way they're not they don't get grow really fast and get really leggy they stay nice and tight and compact which is what we want however last year we had one night that out of the blue got down to like 18 degrees and that greenhouse at that time was unheated and we had basil and tomatoes and uh I think sweet potato vine like some hot weather plants in there it didn't go well y'all <laughs> 
we lost some plants and so it was it was not good so jerry's gonna go ahead and install a heater in here for nights like that so if we get a really sudden dip and we need to keep that supplemental heat in there we can but overall we grow that house cold um, on the cool side i shall say um, but this space is going to be some people have asked what's going to happen here remember this is that production we're going to use it for a multi-use uh, facility for potting up plants when we begin shipping well this will use shipping in here these walls are going to be closed they are not going to remain yeah. open now that we have the concrete we can go ahead and start framing so we'll have this basically for a lack of a better word this back wall against the woods is going to be a solid wall we're going to have windows in here so don't worry about that there will be windows then on each end there will be huge massive garage style roll-up doors that way it'll be super easy to get you know machines in here if we need to when the delivery trucks come um, to pick up packages we can easily do that and then coming on down on this end as well there will be the huge garage door on this end and then we'll have an outdoor access like a regular door down here on this corner this will be also connected to the um, this is the dry storage so we will have access to that as well so you can see in there we got <laughs> we've got uh, concrete we've got fertilizers we've got pots we got a little bit of everything in there and um, so yeah so that kind of gives you I think an overall view of what is going to be happening in these spaces overall so let's go check on the soil and see if they are ready to start unloading has gotten uh, about half of the truck unloaded and what you see that is left on the truck is the soil it is the big bulk soil in massive bags we ordered this because of the potty machine right so we have had a potty machine on order since the beginning of the year and great news Jerry just found out late yesterday afternoon that it is all finished it is assembled all the pieces are there they are just have to run it through its test and then it will be shipped to us possibly within like the next week or so we will have it here at the nursery so super super exciting that is what those huge bags of soil are because the potty machine will have a large hopper that Jerry will be able to use the bobcat, hold those bags above the hopper, cut it, and the soil will just fall in, as opposed to the individual bags of the potty soil. So let me show you what those look like and all the different things that we have, the different types of soil that we have gotten over the last two days. For the time being, we have all of the extra soils, the retail soils up here, up at production, kind of hiding out underneath the woods. That way Jerry can bring them down to the retail portion of the nursery as we need them. That way it doesn't just kind of, you know, take up a lot of space down at the nursery. And plus they are wrapped in this lovely blue plastic. So it's not the most attractive thing to have down at the nursery. Um, but what we have up here is this whole section is nothing but the proven winners potting soil so this is the only kind of potting soil that i like to use in my containers it is the proven winners premium all-purpose potting soil so we have got uh, two four six eight pallets i believe right here of that then of course we have the land and sea compost we have had this for six weeks or so so we've got plenty of pallets so those of you that are worried if we still have land and sea yes we do and we can order more what was also delivered yesterday with that proven winter's potting soil is the black gold ultra outdoor planting mix really like this as well so black gold is the retail brand 
that is also made by SunGrow. SunGrow is huge industry leader in professional potting mixes. That is what these taller pallets are. And you will notice that I had my big, huge, fat Sharpie and I was writing on the side of those, um, like this says 3B. This is what we use all for our annuals. Um, this little section right here was broken. So you can see that it's a good blend. It has perlite, aged pine bark fines. There is zero fertilizer in our professional mixes. Jerry really likes not to have any kind of fertilizers, slow release fertilizers in the professional mixes. That way we can add what we want to the blends. We can fertilize the annuals as they are needed because different annuals need different amounts of fertilizers. That way he can control completely all of the fertilizer that goes into the mixes on the professional side. So we've got 3B, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got 3B here, um, lots of those. I believe there's, there are 2.8 cubic foot bags. They're a nice big size bag. And I'm, there's 48 bags on a pallet. So however many we have up here. And then down here beside the dry storage and the annex you will see he's starting to put the big bags right here um let's see this is also a 3b so this is that exact same mix that i just showed you but it is in the massive bags so there you go for that next door we have 865 865 is for the shrubs yes shrubs <laughs> i'm trying to think make sure in my brain so 865 is for the shrubs and then down here is 52. 52 is for the perennials and if i got that backwards i will let you know but one is for the shrubs one's for the perennials and really the big difference is is the amount of like pine bark that is in there so it drains faster you want your annuals to hold on to a little bit more water your shrubs you want to really drain really well so that's why we have all the different numbers and the different recipes like i said i'll double check to make sure that i got the perennial and shrub ones correct but yeah so jerry's just going to keep unloading stay tuned again for that fun footage of the concrete being poured of course when that potting machine arrives and as we know more information i will take you along for the ride and when it gets here we'll we'll show you all the bells and whistles and the detail about it but jerry came in yesterday he was so excited and i was like babe i will believe it when the thing shows up <laughs> at the gate um, it's been a whole it's been a whole thing it's been a whole process trying to get that potty machine here but hey what a great christmas present if it really does come um, in the next two weeks so that will be fantastic as always thanks so much for gardening with creekside thanks for being a part of this wild and crazy life that we have that is never boring always fun and adventurous you know <laughs> we haven't been bored in years around here so we just appreciate all your love and support y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends